Welcome to the Tissue Box Podcast. I'm your host, Pam Jordan. Were as emotional as they were at the time, I had to deal with them right then and there. I couldn't bring that back and have somebody else deal with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times we pass our pain on to other Ooh, people. Yes, we do um, that. Unfairly to them. Because we don't deal with exactly. it. Exactly. We don't we don't know how to express it because we don't understand the emotions of what we're feeling ourselves right. until we come to terms with what we're dealing with and face those issues as damaging and as hurtful of a process it is. We need to deal with that because that's the only way we're going to be better for the people in our lives and the exactly. people around us because Otherwise, we're just going to keep damaging relationships. And that's the problem. That's why it's so hard. When you do the work, you end up running into everybody else who hasn't done the work yet. That's the problem. And, and I'm that's nobody's, I'm nobody's therapist. And so with these women, I'm just like, I'll be wanting to tell them, hey, look, this is what you have to do in order to be with me. I can't do that. Because then it's like, oh, shoot. Then they realize, oh, man, I'm in no way near that position to be able to do that. And then it's just, it's that realization is just too much to handle. So I'm just like, okay, you know what? There's only but so much I can, I can, I can deal with, I can do. There's only but so much. So when you meet somebody, and I'm, and I'm sure you have, mm-hmm. and you're saying to yourself, I, I can't tell them, just like you said, I can't right. tell them what it's going to take to be with me. Right. 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 So, so how do you maneuver around relationships like that? Because surely you have to deal with women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's it, it's in a particular capacity because I compartmentalize. <laughs> <laughs> I, what I mean by that is I'm able we, to be in we, the moment. You, you understand what I'm saying? No. I, okay. <clears throat> um. So you like willy nilly. Well, no, 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 no. It's not willy nilly. It's it's just like okay. This is gonna be very, very difficult to explain in a very chauvinistic and non harming way <laughs> to every other woman that sees this and like. Uh, but okay, so no, so we want you to be real though. We yeah, want yeah, you yeah. to be real, and this is just this this. This is your truth. Right, you right, know, right. It doesn't have to be right. It only applies to me. It only applies to you. Yeah, yeah, it only yes. applies to me. Okay, so. <laughs> <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. So you remember how, uh, like, think like a man, right? You know, the 90 day thing, you know, how Steve Harvey made a very good point in the factor that when you start a job and they give you, put you on a 60 day probationary period before they give you any benefits, all that good stuff. Right. Got, got it. Okay. So the realization that I and this woman we meet each other, we lock eyes, and we yeah. realize that yeah. we're just like, oh, man, she is bad. And he, <laughs> she's just like, oh, he's so handsome. And we just, uh, you know. Now, we exchange, let's just get to the point where we exchange numbers. She goes her way, I go mine, and we're both excited. And we're like, oh, I just met somebody. She's already telling her homegirl, I just met this dude, girl, at the such and such. And I'm like, boy, I met this girl. And now, at some point in time, will either one of them realize the fact that if we are that attracted to each other, there has to be other people who are as well, right? Mm. So you have to go into the situation knowing and understanding that there are probably five other me's, okay, mm-hmm. that are trying to vie for the same attention that I'm getting from you right now. Wow. So not having that in the back of your mind will cause you to wake up two or three weeks later and say, what are we doing? Or I saw you with somebody else. Or who is that girl in your phone? Or who is that number? Or what? And you're like, hold on, slow down. Wait a minute. When did we get here? We're just getting to know each other. There has to be an understanding that, and most of the time, I I can't say men in general. Me personally, I don't ask questions about what you have going on outside of when we're together. Unless it's something about work or life or current events or something directly involved in your day-to-day life, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask those questions because I feel like, if you want me to know those things, that is a part of you that you have to introduce to me. That's not something that I should be asking you about. But sometimes women don't have no ill wills about saying who that is. <laughs> or what is that? But this is what? in the early stages now. In the yeah. very early stages. Right, right. The, the, you know, it's almost like, um, <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to use a scenario, and this is going to sound really, really foul, but I really don't care at this point in time because I'm really trying to make a point. So <clears throat> contentment can be a man's worst enemy. And what I mean by that is there was a situation where I was dealing with this female 
And, you know, we talked for a little while. And, of course, you know, things, you know, got physical, right? So there was one night in particular where it was a physical night. It was late. She got up to leave, right? And I said, hey, it's late. Where are you going? Chill. Go to sleep. It's okay. You know, no problem. Little did I know that that gesture in her mind made me her man. Uh. It's the little things that we do that we don't realize what man you have ran into prior to me. The nigga you did, was dealing with before me might have just been trash. And so a small gesture like spend the night, it's okay, I don't want nothing to happen to you, may mean you love me oh. instead of meaning I'm oh. just trying to be nice. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's good. Contentment right. sometimes can be a man's worst enemy. I, right. I don't need a lot. So if you spend about two or three months with me, people on the outside looking in will think we're a couple because that's just the way I carry myself. When I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm opening the door. I'm saying, hey, baby, hey, come sit down. You know, all of that good stuff. So if you're looking at it from the outside in, of course, because that's what I've been, that, that, that's what I feel like I'm supposed to do. If I like you, I'm showing you that I like you. It doesn't translate into love. It doesn't translate into well, how I want you, to marry you. How do you communicate that? Oh, to God, her. hell if I know. I, I, constant reminders. Once I found out that my contentment was a problem, then I had to remind, I set alarms and alerts every two weeks. Hey, I just want to let you know we're still friends. Because if you don't, they will assume that it's more. Somebody will assume the position if it's well, not stated what the position is. Okay, so when, you, when you're having that conversation, we're just friends, well, I, I, what does that mean? What, what does that mean to me? Well, I, I probably won't say that because that sounds bad. But what I'll probably say is, is that we're having a good time. We're enjoying ourselves. Now, a lot of that would probably have to do with how did we initiate this relationship? Was it based on, hey, I like you. You like me. I'm not really looking for anything right now. So we'll just see where it goes. That's like, you know, I, I, I don't have to commit to anything. But I'm just kind of free now. It depends. Some women will say, as long as you just sleeping with me, it's okay. I, and some guys will be, that's monogamy, isn't it? I mean, it, yeah, okay. Well, if they say, okay, it's okay as long as you're sleeping with me, just sleeping with me, what, what, what are you doing? Well, are that, you just sleeping with her? It depends on if we set those terms and conditions prior to the relationship starting. So you actually have a conversation like, okay, well, when do you get to that point when you say it's just me? You better. Uh, nowadays, uh, because you'll be walking in the blind. If you don't ask the right questions, you won't know. And, and nowadays with social media and the way in which people interact, which is not physically anymore, they interact socially right. through social media. So it's very difficult to pinpoint and to say, matter of fact, when do we know a couple is a couple now? Yeah. When, when they become Instagram official. It's not wow. when we, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, internally between them two, they have come to a, d a decision of when they are a couple. But to everybody else, it's Instagram official. But I guess w what I'm trying to say is that, that, that there has to be more discussions. When you talk about trauma, when you talk about talking, we talk about therapy, you can have that with the partner or the person that you want to be your partner. It's just that we don't go into that much depth when we first meet each other. And that's the problem. You know, it's like, okay, trying to figure each other out. And that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. When an NFL team goes against another NFL team, they get an entire week to plan. They're watching film. They're picking up on tendencies. I get a blueprint before I go and play this game. It's just only fair. So we should share with each other those idiosyncrasies and those things that make us who we are up front and personal, like eight kids. So, people have to be honest. <laughs> yes. And not everybody want not not everybody is forthcoming with that information and being honest. So when you go into a relationship and you're not honest, that leads to situations. You know, and it, and it's not just it's not just men. It's it's females, too, because like you said, in the beginning, you're just trying to figure it out. And you exactly. don't really know. You know, I like this guy. I like being with him. But I don't know if he's like the one, the exactly. one, you know, but um, I'm going to be committed to that to find out. Right. So I need to find out if he's on the same page. Right. Being commit research doesn't mean 
that I, it, okay. I could go on three really good job interviews and not get any of the jobs. It, 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 so it, it's not necessarily a, a matter of, it, I'm not saying like a pick and choose, but you have to be careful in your selection and commitment process because once you open that door, mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's why the conversations and the, the, the total transparency in the beginning is so important. Because I don't want to wake up three months later and find another person. Right. <laughs> right. And it's so it's it's I, I love the example that you gave about how, you know, um, you can tell a woman just being who you are, being a man and looking out for her, her well-being you know, how she can interpret that as he loves me, you know, because, you know, as as women, that's that's what we're taught. You know, if a man is being a gentleman and he's mm -hmm. being nice to you, he really cares about you. But we quickly turn that because we're emotional. We're emotional beings. We are, too, and though. I, I don't know if that's in the in the same way, though. OK, I, right. True. That, yeah. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Our, our emotions come when it's fight or flight. Right, 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 right. Ours just come from you being right. a gentleman. Right. You know, we True. we we are quick to to latch on to that. Yeah. Um, but then we find out along the way you just being nice and you don't really you don't mean me any goodwill. You know, you don't want to be around. But <laughs> instead of telling me that you don't want to be around, you just go do other stuff and let me try to figure it out myself. You know? Well, yeah, not yeah. That's 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 bad too. Now you should be. But then at the same time too, it's also we have a tendency to do things out of protection, even when they hurt, even when it's not good. You know, it, it, I I don't want to tell you because I don't want to hurt your feelings. You know what I'm saying? When we say all of the time to our children, I don't care what it is. Tell me. I know. Isn't that crazy how we do that? It, it's just, it. It compartmentalization again. We love our children. We're supposed to love our, our spouse, our significant other as well, right? But that's mm -hmm. a different type of love because we love our siblings different. We love our, you know, there's people that we say that we love, but we love them in a different way. But aren't you hurting them anyway if you're telling them, um, I don't want to tell. You, well, I don't want to hurt your feelings. But you're 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 hurting yeah. anyway by not saying. Right, right, right. And, and you know, I I found myself telling my son that one time, like, yo, don't worry about my feelings. That's not that that's that's not the point. The point is that I know. The point is that you tell me. It's not how I take it or how I react to it. That's that's my burden to bear. Mm -hmm. But I at least want you to share it with me. Th that that's all I ask. If if. To be honest with you, that's a huge part of communication that I think in relationships go bad. And I'm, I'm oh. speaking of my own. You know what I'm saying? Being able to relay that feeling and not having to worry about what the other person going to think. I know. That's the, that's the hard part. You know, you want to be able to be in a relationship where you're free right. to have conversations, right. tough conversations. Right. Not only just the good conversations, right. but the tough conversations because, you know, that's really... What's going to build the relationship? That's where you're going to know if I can quote boys to men. Can you stay? Can you stay in the rain? Mm, yeah, no, I'm yeah. sorry. New edition. New edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah can yeah. you stay in the rain? Are you mm. going to be able to 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 be there for me when I tell you something that's really hard for you to hear? That's why the way I was written. Now, not the way I was raised. I'm sorry. Now, this is some street shit. So, okay. So, like my teenage <laughs> years. <laughs> A, a, a code of merit, if you would, you know, from, you know, you know what I'm saying, from, you know, my friends and my group would be, you got to take her through it. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what? You got to take her through Wait, it. Where they do you that? You got to take her through Wait, the When was you this? Gotta, yeah, you, you, <laughs> like, and and that's what, that was the motto. It was, and what it meant was, is that if she really down for you, you'll know it. Cause she going, you, you got to prove it. Got to be kidding me with yeah, that right like, now. For real, I'm serious. It, it, it was a, you. It was a, it was a code. On it was a purpose, code of right. You take somebody through shiggity on yeah, purpose. Yeah, just to make sure that they die for you and that they go ride for you. Yeah. <laughs> and we've and I've seen guys totally drag. I mean, not not totally drag. Let me, let me stop. You mean that? But, nah, nah. But just just kind of you know, and and they be right there and they hold it and and then wow. but then. But then, then now there is a light at the end of the tunnel of that. Now there's the treasure at the end of the rainbow. But 
not everybody can go through that to get to the treasure. I get it. And who would want to? But what I'm saying is, is that for a man to commit sometimes there has to be that rite of passage. We have to see it and believe it and feel it. Most men don't get into a committed relationships until they want to. You have to want to. It's like quitting cigarettes. I don't know. It, 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 it's all mental. You have to be in a space mentally to say, okay, I'm good. I don't need to do X, Y, and Z. And be okay with just looking. Hmm. And not touching. And not touching. That's a, that's a, that, they, we got to get to that point. Because what I'm doing is, is I'm denying my natural instincts. You know what I'm saying? I, so if I'm going to do that, it's trick, not trichnology, but it's almost to the point where I have to dig deep. I got to get way down in there and be like, yo, this is really what I want. And this is all I want. And this is all I'm going to have. It's like standing in front of a mirror right before you go on stage and convincing yourself you're ready to go on stage. <laughs> yeah, it's a process. Because it's, it, it, I, man, I'm telling you, I, there's lots of men who are in great relationship. They face, like the Charlemagne situation, but even he'll tell you, I had to get to that point where I had to. I, that's a, it, it, it's, it's, it's mental, man. You have to commit yourself totally and completely. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a discipline. It's a way of life. It's damn near a culture to be a one woman man, a, a, a faithful man. It's like taking a class. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, yeah, you got to graduate. That's crazy. I don't understand why it's so difficult for men to be that way and when it's so easy for women to be that way. And then just like you said, when you, this code that you got, you went through uh, about dragging a woman, right? Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, you drag a woman through that. And she takes that because women, we're, we're taught, you know, Guys are going to be guys. They're going to screw up. You know, you got to love them anyway, mm. you know. But then there's some, they get to a point where you take too much as a right. female. Right. You be like, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Right. And when enough is enough and when we say it's enough, mm. you done. You might as well hang it up. And then if you doing that to see if I'm really down for you and I get to the point where I'm I'm done, son. You don't put me through too much garbage. I am not taking it anymore. Oh, right? And scorned. That's when he realizes, <laughs> you know what? This this is the one. But then I'm gone. Uh, yeah, right. Then it's too late. It's too realize. it's too late. Yeah, that, that we we sometimes it can't go too far. Sorry, now, I got passionate about that. Uh, no, no, no. no that's <laughs> not, now uh, one other thing too. Now, um, <laughs> this is going to only touch. A few people, only a few men out there are going to understand this, and they're probably in the armed service in some way, shape, form, or fashion. You have to be a military person to truly understand this. Or if you're a well-traveled individual, if you got some, you know, stamps on the passport. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the women from other cultures, especially within the Asian diaspora, and when I say that, I mean China, Japan, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnamese, Taiwan, that entire scope area over there. Mm -hmm. The culture of women are raised completely the opposite of American women. Um, now, traditionally, you know, because, you know, this platform is what it is, and we know our people, and I'm saying we usually, in general, we talk about relationships, we're talking about uh, people of color, you know what I'm mm -hmm, saying, mm -hmm. our people, you know what right. I'm saying, in relationships. Now, as you know, much as people want to deny it, they just as much as close to us as, you know what I'm saying, anybody, especially Filipinos, um, you know, you know, Thai people, you know, it, it, the history goes back way, but anyway, um, it's really, really unique how their women are raised, um, you know, when it comes to the dynamic of a relationship and how in which they treat their men. And it is so crazy because to see it and experience it, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Well, like, how do they treat their men? Head of the household, leader of the pack, you know, I honor you, you know, whatever you need, I got you. But it's not submissive to the point of Barbie. We're not talking about no Stedford Wives crap here now. Just feeding into your ego. Because, no, not that either. Because hmm. they can be independent as well. But it's what they provide in a sense of companionship. And I'm not saying that they don't talk. I'm not saying that they don't have businesses and, 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 and work and, and do all that stuff too. But it's the way in which they position themselves. They understand the hierarchy. 
and 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 they don't they don't need to speak on it either. It's not as if they say, "Oh, you know, the man is great and all powerful." No, it's not spoken. It's done and it doesn't need to be spoken. It's almost like an innate ability that they have to be able to cater to a man's needs and also get what they want out of the relationship. It is amazing. I'm telling you people, I've seen it for myself. Like it, it, it's, it's almost to the point where I've actually seen a man. Uh, now, this is I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right hand the Bible stuff. It was a guy. I'm not going to say no names. He is a um an E8, I think, which is like a master sergeant in the military, in the army. And most, and if anybody's listening to this, you would know what I'm talking about. So, and, and this gentleman, he is, uh, he was divorced and uh, he was divorced about three, four years. He's got about two or three kids. Right. And he finds himself in this area. He's on a deployment again. Right. He's still in the military, serving his country, doing his thing. Right. Taking care of his family, his needs and all that good stuff. But this is what he does, you know, on the weekends or whatnot. Right. So he meets this woman. She's a Filipino. Right. And, you know, she's just asking him about, you know, life in general. And they're just having a conversation, blah, blah, blah. And he's confessing himself. We, you know, strangers, I get it. We tend to talk freely with strangers more so than we do with people we know and love. Mm -hmm. um, so he's getting into this conversation. And then she's hearing this and then takes this information, right? And then for the next couple of times in which they meet and interact, she's always bringing up that conversation. Things from that conversation, things that he spoke of, things that were, I guess, important to him that she felt was important to him at that time. And you know, you start to see them hang out more. You start to see them go on dates. You start to see him change from being this person that's just going out to a bar with his face hanging down. And I'm not, believe me, I'm not saying that a black woman can't do this for him. Please don't, don't, I, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that to see the transition and the way he changed, the way she changed his outlook on things, was amazing and then to have him himself speak on it like and tell people like and telling me like yo man i don't know what it is about this girl that is the line that every single woman wants to hear mm. every single i, I, I'm I, can agree I promise you, you total uh, yeah i give you that and when he said that i said okay cool i get it i know he he's, he's gone he yep she did it she 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 has totally and then when you meet her Hey, how you doing? Welcome. Come in. How y'all doing today? Oh, I just cooked. Y'all want something to eat? Now, I know this is I, black women do this, too. A lot of women do this. Mm -hmm. I'm not singling out. I'm, I, please okay. don't 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 say that. All I'm not. Right, the, the, I, was, black, I was about to go there. Right. It, it's, it's not that. It's not that. Completely <laughs> not that. So it, it, it's just the factor of I think this is a consistent part of her character and being. I think with black women, this has to be brought out of you instead of it being an innate, natural thing that happens regardless of the situation. Sometimes a situation will cause, whether it be trauma or whatever have you, or whatever happenings that, that, that went down, maybe in a prior relationship or what have you, we carry some of that with, you, uh, with us. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to shut that thing off and I don't know how they do it. Because I, I, you know, they may have been in a relationship prior or something like that, but they don't bring none of that to the new situation. Hmm. And it's amazing, like, because it's hard to do. Oh, my, yes, it's hard to do. So, I mean, because you know, um, I I don't understand because I've I've never met any exactly any of them, and I I can't see. Okay, you're an you're an emotional being. I wish I could. I I wish I could. I wish I had the ability to cut off a situation just like that. It just right, you know. But that's hard to do when you're when you're um, emotional. Is that fair to the next person then? If you don't get rid of all of that before bringing them into you, your no, situation? No, no, it, it, it's not fair. You don't go into it thinking it, <laughs> thinking like that. No, you don't. You just because if, if you're being honest, you just you you're being you, right? And then you got to be able to learn a person. You're not mm -hmm. going to just share everything right off the bat, but you, you're going into it with, you know, maybe subconsciously it's still right there and you're still, you know, walking in that hurt. Triggers. Yeah, 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 definitely triggers. But, you know, consciously you're like, okay, um, I'm, I'm ready for this newness. I'm, I'm ready for this next chapter. I, I, I want to be loved the way that I want to be loved. Um, but then again, here come the triggers and you revert back because, yeah, 
The red flags. Yeah, the red and flags sometimes coming. We ignore even. them because we don't want to be alone. Sometimes we ignore the red flags and we continue in a situation knowing doggone well that this may not be the situation for us. A lot of times we, uh, what do you call it? Accept, not accept. We settle. Settle. You know what I'm saying? We settle. And, and a lot of times we talk ourselves out of it because we like, damn, maybe my standards are a little bit too high. Maybe I'm fooling myself. You start myself. second guessing yourself. Yeah, I ain't going to find nobody like that. I'm tripping. You know wow. what I'm saying? Because I, I done said that myself a couple times. I'd be like, really? I, I done been like, boy, that's it. I ain't going to. Because when you, I, you know, somebody that you'd be like, okay, this the one. Like, she got it. She got all of the stuff that I need. She on point with it. It's great. But it'd be something. And it's, it's, it's the Kanye syndrome. Uh -oh. I always find uh -oh. something wrong. <laughs> always, <laughs> man. Syndrome. Always trying to find something wrong. Okay. So uh, my my last question for you. Mm. This is this has been a great conversation. Mm. So, how did painting pictures save you? <laughs> well, <clears throat> what we just did for the last forty five minutes. I've never had that ability prior to writing rhymes and really getting into painting pictures with words. I've never been as wordy as I have been over the last, what, 10, 15 years of my life. Oh. And I, I was able to come out of my shell and really start speaking my thoughts and putting it in action. And I, I see that as a poem. I'm, I'm constantly writing my life's poem on a daily basis. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your music and... Ooh. <laughs> well, I know you get Picasso. happy. You yeah, get yeah, happy. Yeah. yeah, you get happy at this point. So yeah, tell us a little bit. And maybe even give us a little freestyle of what you got going uh, on. I know yeah. you just dropped your 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 album, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Violent calligraphy. You know what I'm saying? Dropped uh, September 30th. Yeah, it's out now. Go get it. It's on all streaming platforms. Um, but you can go buy the album at www.hiphopsouls.com. Uh, it's me and my partner, Black Sheep. You know, we're totally independent. You know, shouts out to my man, ESK. We like a three-man team right now. Mm -hmm. Totally mm -hmm. independent, doing everything. But the website, please go, you know, check out the album. You know, go to YouTube, our YouTube channel, uh, Hip Hop Souls. Um, you know, I am all over social media. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I'm old and I don't got no business on no social media, but they told me that's how I got to get my music out there. So that's what I'm doing. So um, I'm at Instagram at Picasso4925, Twitter at Picasso, TikTok Picasso0791, and Snapchat Picasso4925. But okay. um, yeah, paint pictures with words. Okay, so you got a little freestyle ready for us? Oh man, I don't do no freestyles really like that. We'll give that. us something off the know. album. Uh, so what is what is your favorite track off the album, by the way? Oh, um... I would have to say uh, YDS, uh, you know, um, Nomad Scholar Reference from the Depths of My Soul. You know, I tend to spit it viciously cold. You know, I just, writing has always been something that I've loved to do to express myself, my vocabulary, and my extent of being able to, you know, combine poetry and music. So I just, I just love to do it. And, you know, um, yeah, Picasso. Picasso. <laughs> So thank you again for sharing with us. And what would you say to guys out there listening who are dealing with some form of trauma and how do they heal themselves? I mean, I know that's different from for every person, but your advice mm -hmm. to those out there who are struggling to deal with their emotions and to be able to uh, communicate effectively, mm -hmm. what would be your message to them? Because we're changing trauma's narrative here at the tissue box. Right, so, of course, of yeah. course. Um, I know this is going to sound cliche, but internalize everything. You have to know who you are to be able to deal with your emotions. Right. A lot of people don't know who they are yet. Knowledge That's deep. of self and That's... understanding of self and knowing who you are, mm -hmm. most important thing you could do for yourself as a man. Well said, Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. <laughs> I definitely appreciate you. We're going to have to give, get you back and well, let you do yeah, a little yeah, something yeah. with your... Uh, I like to run my mouth now. I, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you so much for sharing with us. And um, we do appreciate your time. We appreciate what you're doing. We appreciate your growth. Mm. We appreciate your triumph. Mm. Because that's basically what we want to communicate on the tissue box. Yes, you've had some trauma dealing with some issues in your life, mm. but how you overcame 
Yes. How how did you get to where you are now? And it's a beautiful thing. I love this is a loving great what I see. To do this on, yeah, definitely. You know, hey, this is this is therapeutic in itself, right here. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for tuning in to the tissue box. We hope that you will join us on our next episode. In the meantime, we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want you to visit the tissuebox.com so we can stay connected. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to subscribe, leave rating and a review and let's stay connected. Visit the tissuebox.com to join our mailing list. Until next time.